So now let's do uh, my discussion on why battery specs are usually BS. In the previous video, we talked about uh, that the internal resistance of the battery uh, wastes energy as heat when you draw current from the battery. And we can calculate the amount of energy wasted as heat using the formula uh, power equals current squared times resistance which means that the amount of energy wasted goes up as the square of the current. So if we take an example where we have an 11.1 volt 3S battery, 1500 milliamp hour rated capacity that gives us 16.65 watt hours of power capacity. And if we assume a 20 milliohm internal resistance, then say we're pulling one amp from the battery. One amp, we run that back through that formula and we get 0.020 watts wasted as heat. If we then convert those watts back to amps by dividing by the voltage, we get 0.002 amps. And what that tells us is that for every one amp we're pulling, we're wasting the equivalent of 0.002 amps as heat. Again, that's assuming a constant 11.1 volts, which in reality will not be the case, but we're just sort of working an example here. On the other hand, if we were pulling 30 amps, we run that math again, we see 18 watts is being wasted as heat. That is way more, isn't it? And if we divide 18 watts by 11.1 volts, we get the equivalent of 1.6 amps. So it means for on top of the 30 amps we're pulling, we're wasting 1.6 amps as heat. So basically, you can see that the more current you're pulling, the more amps you waste as heat. And what that means is that what current do you use when you rate the battery's capacity? Uh, let's say pulling 1 amp, you get a legitimate 1,500 milliamp hours. But then if you're pulling 30 amps, you waste an additional 1.6 amps as heat, which is 5% more, which means that at 30 amps, you're going to have about 5% less capacity than the battery was rated for. Now, and what that means is that a manufacturer could choose to rate their battery capacity at very low currents, which would inflate the apparent capacity relative to real-world high-current use in RC aircraft. Now, my experience has been that most vendors these days, the battery capacity is usually pretty close to honest. Uh, but the problem is that you just, everybody, everybody has different standards for when a battery is empty. Some people pull 80% of the battery's capacity. Some people try to pull closer to full capacity. Some people have a cutoff of 3.6 volts per cell. Some people 3.4. You know, it's all over the place. Uh, but, but in general, I think the days when uh, batteries would be way off on their capacity are probably mostly behind us. That being said, if you're pull, th this is a nonlinear equation. So what that means is it's going to go up as the square of the current, and this situation is going to get worse. At 40 amps or 50 amps, you may get a reduction of maybe 10%, and the more current you're pulling, the more you're going to care about this. Uh, the more sag you're going to get, the more energy is wasted as heat, and the less... Uh, actual capacity you're going to get out of your batteries. But hey, I, you know, I think we also have more educated consumers in that if you are running an aircraft where you're regularly pulling 60 amps, you probably don't expect to get the 1500 milliamp hour rated capacity out of a battery. You probably are used to having to run your batteries only, say, to 60 or 70 percent capacity. Uh, and it's just a fact of life for you because you're running a, a, a hot snot craft. Okay. So, so that's why milliamp hour capacity can be manipulated by some manufacturers. Uh, that's one way that they can manipulate the capacity. They run the calculation at very low amps, very little energy is wasted as heat. They get an honest number, but the assumptions that they make are not the same as the assumptions that you make. Now, here's the one that I think is still ripe, ripe for abuse, and that's C rating. C rating is the amount of current that the battery is rated to provide. And the thing is, there's like, there's no standard for calculating C rating. So what would a C rating standard look like if it existed? You would say, the battery will provide this rated current for 5 seconds with no more than point, uh, 0.3 of a volt drop. I mean, I don't know, I just made that up. You would need to say that it would provide the current for a certain amount of time, and you would calculate the maximum allowable voltage drop or another way to do it if you really uh if you really knew your stuff is 
you could infer the C rating from the internal resistance of the cells. But you got to be really careful there because the internal resistance of the cell of a battery cell is not a fixed number. It changes a lot with temperature and it also changes as the battery begins to provide current. So the very first, uh, this, the, the internal resistance will be high until current begins flowing, then it'll drop. But then as the battery heats up, it'll go up again. So it's a very dynamic thing. And that also would be right for abuse. I mean, if you had a universal standard that says we're going to take the internal resistance of the battery, and if it is from this point to this point, we're going to call that a 65C battery. Well, uh, that would still, you know, manufacturers could, uh, I don't know, put their, put their batteries in the fridge or something. I don't know. Uh, so, so anyway, um, there isn't a standard though for C rating. And so, uh, the more current you pull, the more voltage sags. How much is too much? How much does the vendor think is too much? Nobody knows. The longer you pull current, the more voltage will sag. Well, how long should it supply the rated current? You may have a battery that legitimately can give you 60 amps for three seconds, and then it's going to start dropping, you know? So, so is that good enough? And the thing is that manufacturers internally, I guarantee you that, that folks like, uh, like Turnigy, or Bonka, or any of these other Lumineer, any of these other battery manufacturers, uh, they have a standard for how they rate their batteries. And they're not, probably, they're not going to tell you what it is. Because they could be held accountable if their batteries didn't meet the standard. And that's the reality. But the reality of the situation is that these, the, it, the, 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 the battery's current rating is very uh, hard to pin down that the battery's performance will change a lot depending on the environmental conditions, the battery's age. There's also variance within, I mean, if you go to the very source suppliers out of wherever, out of Japan or whomever who's making these cells, you know, there's variance within the cells. And so there's variance within manufacturing lots. It's very hard to pin this stuff down. Many times I've seen test results where one manufacturer does really well and then a few months later, the same manufacturer is doing badly. And the answer, in my opinion, is that they got a good batch of cells from the, the factory and then they got a bad batch of cells, you know. Uh, or they happen to have supplied a battery that was at the upper end of the variance curve one day and on the lower end the next day. Or sometimes you'll see a manufacturer where the 1300 milliamp packs are awesome and the 1800 milliamp packs are crap. And, and the reason, again, it goes back to the sourcing of those cells. So I, I kind of... I kind of feel for the manufacturers because we as consumers want to buy a battery and know how much current it can give. If I've got a, a copter that's going to pull 80 amps at full throttle, I want to buy a battery that I know can do it. And the manufacturers have a hard time guaranteeing me that I can do that. And then the marketing guys get involved and we see this inflation of numbers. There's packs out there that are advertising 100C. And I'm not an expert on batteries, and I haven't done a ton of testing on batteries, but I dare say that that is, that's just total BS. I don't know. It may provide 100C for like one second. I don't know. But it's not in any sense what I would call a 100C battery. So the reason C rating is usually BS is that there's no universal standard for measuring it. And so manufacturers are kind of free to say whatever they want, especially if one manufacturer is selling a 65C, 1300 milliamp hour, if somebody else is selling a 75C, if they can find their way around to label it 75C, suddenly people are going to buy that battery. So what I would what I would ask you to take from this video is milliamp hour ratings. I, I threw them in here because there are ways that manufacturers can abuse that. But in my experience, they're usually not too far off. But C rating, just, just ignore it. Assume that most LiPos today are going to give you around 45C, if at best. And there may be a few out there that can do better than that. But you can't get that information from the sticker on the side of the pack. You have to find somebody who's done some kind of testing on the battery to see uh, that it can supply that. And unfortunately, that information is relatively few and far between. The other, the other problem with this is that... Uh, you may have a battery, like I said, that tests very well today, but three months later, it's a different manufacturing lot, and and it's no, there's no guarantee that it's still going to be good. So even the name brand batteries, you can't necessarily trust a vendor unless you you can see from history that the vendor has a good history of only selling high-quality packs. Um, 
So what can you do? I honestly feel like today's lipo technology has kind of plateaued and that we're all sort of bumping our heads against the ceiling. And some batteries do a little better and a little worse than others. And some batteries are just are just garbage, right? I mean, there's some batteries you just wouldn't run on a multi-rotor that's going to pull 50 or six, even 50 or 60 amps, never mind 100. And I really hope that I'm excited about new technologies like the HV lipos and these whatever this graphene thing that I hear people talking about. Suddenly everyone's talking about this graphene batteries from Hobby King. I, I, I'm excited about those things because it seems like manufacturers have been trying and trying to get more out of the current battery technology and it's just not happening. So I hope that it seems to me that maybe some new technology like HV or graphene or who knows what else it might be is what will break us through this plateau. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, that's, that's what I got for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was informative. Happy flying.